Today, I'm going to help you get ramped up on ramps. Here we have the standard ramps 1.4 board. This is the first exposure to 3D printing control boards for a lot of people that were early adopters of the RepRap project. Now this is what's known as an Arduino shield. So an Arduino shield is a board that's designed to fit on top of an Arduino, in this case the Arduino Mega 2560, and it's designed to take all the inputs and outputs on here and enhance them so that it can perform a specific task. In this case, a building a system that is capable of interpreting G-code. So this means this is not only capable of running a 3D printer, but it can also be adapted to run a CNC machine or anything else that might use G-code. So this was pretty popular back in the day. Its popularity has started to fall away because there are some better, faster options out there. In fact, really the only thing it has going for it right now is the fact that it's cheap, it's easy to find, it's well documented, uh, and also the stepper motor drivers are easily replaceable because they're socketed and it can control five axes at once. So that means it can control an XYZ plus uh, two extruders or it can control uh, XYZ plus A. Th there's all sorts of configurations that can be used for it. So the ramps board is useless without the brains of an Arduino to run it. There's no processing power built into this. It's all just power regulation and, uh, you know, mapped paths to allow the Arduino to do what it needs to to control a printer. So the first step in setting up your ramps board is to get it mounted to its partnered Arduino. Now this will only go on one way, but you're going to want to make sure you line up all the pins. And essentially it just kind of sandwiches together. Now newer boards have come out that sort of marry these two together without actually having to have two separate boards. Um, they often have the stepper motors drivers soldered directly to one board, so they're a little less robust, but they are thinner boards and they do take up less space because they're highly specialized to perform the task at hand. With our two boards married together, now it's time to set it up to be able to control the printer. Now, each one of these blocks represents a spot to put a stepper motor driver for each of the axes, and you'll find that underneath each of them is six pins. Now, these pins are used to set the micro-stepping, which is basically how precise it can control the motors. Stepper motor drivers run at 16 or 32 micro-steps, and putting all these pins on sets to 32, which is the highest accuracy level. If your stepper motor drivers don't support 32, and you set this to 32, it'll just default to the highest, so really the easiest thing to do here is to populate them all. Your board should have come with a bag of jumpers, so go ahead and put one on each of the pins. And there we have our ramps board with all of the pins populated. With the pins populated, now it's time to get our stepper motor drivers on there. You'll find all sorts of tutorials on the internet that reference the potentiometer on them and say which uh, potentiometer in which location on which stepper denotes which way it should go on. But because this is open to interpretation and there's so many different versions, you're going to want to be a little more careful with it. So if you look on the underneath of your stepper motor driver, you're going to see some labeling. So you can see up here is direction and ground, and down here is enable and VMO. So direction and ground is probably the easiest one to look at. So if you look at your ramps board, you'll find corresponding labels to what's on the stepper motor driver. So since we're looking for direction, you can see here it says DIR. So if you take your stepper motor driver and you take the direction pin, which is up at the top here, and line it up with that, you know that you are inserting it correctly. Make sure that there's no extra pins on the end and just push it into place. All the stepper motor driver slots are exactly the same, so if your stepper motors are all the same, then you can just proceed to put in the rest. And now our ramps board is ready to control a printer. It's got the drivers it needs and everything is ready to go. Now it's time to start looking at the wiring. So let's take a look and see what's available on it so you know what you need to wire to what. The blue block on the left is how you connect your various heating elements to this ramps board. The D8 would be used for your heated bed. The D10 is used for your first extruder. And if you have a second extruder, it goes to D9. 
If you don't have a second extruder, chances are you're going to be using a parts cooling fan with it, and D9 is where you'll connect that instead. Your main power input is handled through this green connector here, and most of these ramp boards are going to have this sort of disconnecting connector. Uh, so essentially what you'll do is you'll wire your positive and negative, with positive being on the top and negative being on the bottom. And there are two inputs, so positive, negative, positive, negative. You'll screw them into this quick disconnect and just slide it in there. It has two plastic tabs that lock it into place. Now, this isn't the best connector, so if you want to be extra safe with your setup, you're probably going to want to solder directly to the pins underneath. Uh, so for that, you'd have to remove your ramp board again and solder leads off to it, but uh, it is a safer approach, especially if you're running a larger bed. Near each of your stepper motor drivers, you're going to find a set of four pins, and they'll be labeled 2B, 2A, 1A, 1B. These are where you connect your motors. So you'll connect your X, your Y. There are going to be two for your Z here and here, because most standard Cartesian designs do actually use two motors for the Z, plus one for your extruder motor. All modern 3D printers nowadays use end stops, and they're going to connect up here. So you've got your signal, your negative, and your positive. Some end stops are only going to use two pins, and some are going to use three, so you'll have to consult which wire links to what for the end stops you're using. However, what you have here is your X min, your X max, your Y min, your Y max, and your Z min and Z max. So depending on where your end stops are, you'll connect either three or six of these up to allow your printer to be able to find its minimum and maximum reaches. To monitor the temperature of your 3D printer, you're going to connect up some thermistors, and your T0, T1, and T2 are where you do that. T0 will be reserved for your hot end, T1 will go to your bed, and T2 will go to your second extruder if you have one. If your kit came with an LCD, there'll be a breakout board that attaches to the pins on the end here, plus a couple of the auxiliary ports. From there, you'll have a ribbon cable, or two, that come from the breakout board and go to your screen and allow you to control your printer from there. If your ramp setup came with heat sinks for your stepper motors, make sure that you install them. My set did not come with them, but I will be ordering a set before I use them. These stepper motors do tend to get pretty warm, and you don't want them overheating. Overheating means missteps, which means failed prints. With everything on here, now it's time to move on to flashing your firmware. That'll be covered in a future tutorial showing you how to get Marlin set up and how to configure it for the printer that you're running. Wiring your first 3D printer can be a daunting task, but it doesn't need to be overwhelming. If you take the time to learn about what you're hooking up beforehand and you know what every part's going to do, you're going to find that it's not nearly as difficult as you think it is. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough of the ramps board, which is really one of the very first user available boards that allowed you to build your own 3D printer. In the future, I hope to cover additional boards and show you how to set them up, but even just looking at this gives you the basic understanding for other boards. All boards are going to have thermistor inputs, all boards are going to have the ability to control a hot end, control motors, control end stops. There are a lot of commonalities. So while the boards may have advanced, there are some things that are always going to be there. Well, thanks for sticking around till the end of this video. If you found it helpful or informative, toss me a thumbs up. If not, let me know in the comments what I can do in to improve or let me know if you have any questions. If you're new here, subscribe and click the bell. And uh, thank you to everybody that's been supporting me through Patreon and through donations during live streams. You've really helped the channel grow. If you'd like to help me out, there's links to my Patreon and other things through my YouTube profile, so go ahead and check them out. Alrighty, well that's it for this one, and until next time, stay creative.